That's the Andy Social Podcast, episode 220. Two, two, zero. This week's guest is Mark Randall. Mark is one of many people from Adelaide that I had a chat to uh, earlier this year. I bulk recorded the hell out of this podcast. And uh, I've known Mark for quite a few years. He is a jack of all trades. He's a teacher. He's a booking agent. He's a promoter. He's the ultimate nerd and an all-round legend. And um, Mark's been a massive supporter of me, uh, the Antisocial Podcast, uh, Self Starter, um, and um, the, our band Lord, of course. And uh, I bumped into him quite a few times over the years. We've got a lot of great mutual friends. And coming into this conversation, I had this long list of different things we're going to chat about, uh, probably more so on the music side of things. But right off, right off the bat in this conversation, we went full nerd. We just, we just stayed nerd. We geeked out and had this great chat about all sorts of different things in the nerd space. Um, Masters of the Universe, Thundercats, comics, uh, trading cards, all sorts of stuff. So if that sort of floats your boat, you really will enjoy this episode. I mean, that's me being overly confident here, but I reckon you'll enjoy this episode. Um, so I'll have to get Mark back on the podcast sometime down the track uh, to talk a bit more about music because he's worked with so many amazing people in the music world. Um, you know, Joe Satriani, Devin Townsend, uh, Paul Gilbert, uh, a whole bunch of uh, the aristocrats, um, just an amazing sort of resume of uh, amazing artists. I mean, how many times can I say amazing? There you go. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, so I'll have to get him back on uh, down the track. But uh, in this episode, we completely geeked out. And so um, I'm going to put a bunch of links in the show notes so you can learn more about Mark's world, all the things that he's involved with, reach out to him and say hi. And um, if you use Facebook, which most of us do, um, you can check out the Geektopia Oz page, which is probably going to be the main focal point of this conversation. So you can go to uh, facebook.com slash Geektopia Oz, I believe. And um, there's also Mark Randall Music and Thump Music as well. Um, so I'll have everything in the show notes over at andydowling.net or andysocial.net or right on your podcast player. What are you listening through this right now? There should be some clickable links so you can uh, check it all out. So enough yapping on from me. Let's geek out. Enjoy this great chat with the legend himself, Mark Randall. Just Facebook Live. We've been doing it for 20 years. Like every Friday night, pretty much for 20 years, me and my mate have been catching up. And um, we decided one night, why are we doing this when we could just put the camera on? So yeah. we just literally put the camera on. And uh, another mate came on board as well. Uh, he's like, all uh tech yep. orientated so we had like black magic studio cameras and led oh, yeah. lighting and we get parcels from america or uk or wherever unbox them you know um and then uh talk about movies pop culture bands we, you know we talk about um metal or pop or indie whatever whatever's on the charts at the time maybe some uh collections that we know about or have seen things that have just spiked our interest and it's literally shit talk yeah while drinking a couple of beers and people chiming in so people on the live will write their questions into us yeah cool um and that kind of dictates on how long the live will go for so if it's buzzing we'll go if it's not it will just drop it down usually about an hour yeah cool every friday night um and then sometimes we might do the occasional you know quick sort of post or uh, maybe a quick live Mm. during the middle of the week um sometimes i do them on other pages just as um i on other pages i come up as the same name Mm. um so when i post a live on their page it comes up under my my page and it kind of daisy chains back yeah right it's a bit weird that they've taken away the um the dual lives which is a real pain in the ass what was that so you could basically while you're live you Mm. could dial up another person and have them come uh, in the picture as yeah, well yeah, yeah. but uh, facebook stopped it and mm-hmm. said oh well, no one was using it and I'm, i've only ever seen people use it so it was weird wow. but yeah. we've got we've got tech that we're going to be able to when we get our full setup happening again um we'll be able to do it still because mm-hmm. we've got people from all over the world that want to chime in and be on our show because cool. they love they love the aussie stuff you know yeah, yeah. so uh we've got a an artist from Denmark that wants to come on board. She's got some amazing art. We've got killer collectors, like yeah. guys that you would not even. What sort of collections? You know. Like what sort of things? So um, most of the stuff we, most of the guys we kind of hang with could be, would be like you know comic books, mm. um, toys like vintage toys, yep. modern toys too, uh, depending on the lines and um, trading cards. Sometimes yeah, there's okay. some guys that do that too. 
I know someone pretty close that has trading cards. <laughs> um, Good. But mostly, mostly, um, yeah, mostly toys yeah. and comics and then movie-related stuff. You know, some guys even go out and get memorabilia or merch, or not even merch. It's like props yeah, well, from, you know, Masters of the Universe, and you know, 1980s, and these guys are buying, like, actual props from it and that's in their collection so well yeah 80s toys is a big thing yep that's where we're well where my collection kind mm. of spins um and 90s i guess is starting to crank in you know ninja turtles and all that sort of stuff yeah. but um mostly from masters of the universe yeah um that's probably my main focus mm. and that comes back from when my brother was around yep. um he passed away we had them when we were kids from you know when they were released yeah and uh I decided I wanted to finish the set in his honor. Yeah. And I've done that. Oh, wow. I finished it uh, in the month of his 15 year anniversary of his death. Really? Last month, wow. Like last July, yeah. Wow. How's so, that for timing? Uh, that was the goal. The yeah. goal. And I, no expense. It was just yeah, like, just right, it, it's got to be it done. Out. A lot of it I couldn't get. Mm. A lot of it was super rare, super hard. No one lets it go. Some of the stuff that was like the rarest pieces. I actually had friends gift them to me because wow. they wanted to help me yeah. get it done. So, and was that was that people that were following through through the channel as well? So, yeah, some of the, some of the channels, but I've been on the groups like their groups. Um, right. Yeah. You know, I'm probably on 10, 15 different toy pages and comic book pages and stuff too. And of that, those guys, I broadcast on a Friday on our page, mm. but then I share that broadcast onto their pages. Oh, cool. Yeah. Probably sunday morning so saturday evening yeah, night time yeah. that way um america and england and stuff get it when yeah. they're not at work because when yeah. we go live on a friday night it's it. they're just getting out of bed yeah yeah we had we had um we had uk denmark and usa on last night though while we were live yeah. we were running a little late yeah. so we started about 10 p.m yeah. and um everyone's getting ready for work watching us and just talking shit and we're drunk we're sinking beers while they're getting ready to go to work you know enjoy your day yeah yeah exactly we've done it the day was great just go and do your thing yeah that's you know? right yeah, yeah the future looks bright oh absolutely absolutely no it's good fun with the masters of the universe stuff is that because um oh, just my memory sucks but mm -hmm. i just remember what uh as a kid um was that the one where you had like the the two big forts um so there was the the green one and there was also the purple yep. skull one so it was like the skeletal right. one was a purple yep. one and then so you had yeah. castle gray skull which yep. was the green one okay yep. and the purple one was snake mountain snake mountain okay yeah there you go mm -hmm. so remember them because they sort of opened up like a like a case didn't they yep. and then they had little platforms inside yep, i think they did yep. yeah there you go yeah that's all right from my memory yeah Can and then there was another there was other play sets as well yeah that was like good versus evil yeah um then there was other play sets like the horde play set which is the fright zone and then they had um there was a big play set that came out at the end that never really got released in australia yeah i managed to score one year and a half ago maybe two years and uh it's called the attorney play set yeah, right. and it's okay. effectively three towers the main central tower is probably about three and a half foot tall oh really okay and yeah. off of the other towers there's a monorail that goes around <sighs> and this whole thing like lights up and well not lights up but it has like the, a monorail that runs and you got your, like your he-man or whatever hanging off this monorail going around and wow. it, it's pretty pretty incredible but it's, it's super expensive oh, I, bet, yeah. I bet i um i remember i must have come across, i must have, i've just got these vague memories of being at like a like a swap meet or not not like a like a sort of comic con sort of thing mm -hmm. but like um trash and treasure sort of thing and mm -hmm. i remember seeing this like uh plastic container on the ground underneath the trestle table and it had all these old toys and just all thrown in there and most of them were banged up i remember pulling out a bunch of like broken transform transformers uh -huh. and i got them all they're like a dollar each or whatever but there was a there's a green action figure i'm pretty sure it was from master of the universe um i don't know the name and you, you'd probably be able to work it out um, I think he was like one of the bad guys. He was green and very furry. Moss Man. Moss, that's Moss Man. Okay, Moss Man, cool. Yeah. So I remember that and he didn't have a head. Oh, right. And I thought that was so cool. Uh -huh. And I'm like, for a dollar, I've got this headless hairy dude. I had no <laughs> idea what it was or anything. And it was only until later on where I found 
must have been a catalog or something like that. And they had the pictures of them all. I'm like, oh, that's what it's meant to look like. Mm-hmm. And I sort of look back and went, oh, there's a hole there. Yeah. I was like just a little kid. Yeah. But um, yeah, I always remembered that, but I couldn't remember the name or whether it was actually part of that part of that series or yeah, not. Yeah. So there you go. But he's, he's the same body shape or buck as... Um, beast man who's bright orange okay and right. so he he's not flocked moss man is but moss man originally had a smell as well so when oh, you really? got him out of the packet he smelled kind of like mossy or like a yeah. must, musty yeah sort of thing. yeah wow. yeah okay, and they, they had another one called stinkor okay and he had this like skunky type pheromone yeah and some of them when you pick you know you find them now some of them actually still smell still got the smell yeah pretty rare but yeah. they do yeah is there like when i think about sort of music collections and I've mm. always loved sort of hunting through secondhand music stores and especially being sort of in some weird country and finding like a gem somewhere and mm. you're finding alternative pressings. So you find like the Japanese release, the UK release, then you might find like uh, the other day I, I was going through my collection and I actually realized I've got a, a South Korean release of a band called Treat from Sweden and I had no idea. I thought it was just like a, a German pressing or something. I looked at the back and I'm like, that's Korean. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I've got this weird sort of alternative version. Mm. Is that the same with some of these toys where uh, you've obviously got your your individual characters, so to speak, and their, their main sort of toys, but is it does it get to a level of detail where there might be slight variations or a particular one that's been made in a particular market's mm-hmm. more valuable than yeah. say the US where it might yeah. be mass produced? Yeah. So in terms of Masters of the Universe, yeah. I guess that's one of the main lines I collect. The um they're they're made in different countries. Mm. So the the coups or the COOs are different, country of origin. Yep. You might have uh Venezuela, yeah. America, um, uh, Brazil, mm. so Estrella or Rotoplast or Leo, which yeah. is India. Yeah, well. um, it could be the same He-Man or whichever figure, but it could have up to five, maybe even six different countries. Yeah. And then depending on the figure, depends on what iteration that it is as well. So oh, right. you, if you get like an original American eight back He-Man, there's certain telltale signs that you look for to make sure right. that it's legit. Um, that one differs in price significantly compared to, and especially if it's complete, mm. um, compared to like, you know, what we would get here. The funny thing is most of the American guys that collect want, you know, they're looking for the variant of Mechanic or, you know, Manny Faces or something like that. Mm. And they're like, I need a pink pipes guy or something. It's like, well, that's in Australia. That was standard. Yeah. So for us, we got, oh yeah, I got pink pipes. We got like 20 of them. And so we can sell them back to these guys or swap them for better figures because they didn't get them. Yeah. So because we were closer to Asia, Hong Kong, mm. um, and Malaysia made toys were variants as well. Right. And the variants actually have better value outside of Australia than they do here. That's so cool. It, it reminds me of, um, like, I'll, I'll go go into like a, I don't know, a Lifeline or mm-hmm. Salvos or whatever, and I'm sorting through CDs and the ones, and I'm going to completely ruin it for myself because now everyone else is going to do it. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'll find, I'll find the Jimmy Barnes CDs, mm-hmm. Cold Chisel CDs. Um, you don't really find ACDC, it's still, it's very rare that you'll mm-hmm. find anything like that. But the sort of Australian rock stuff, especially mm-hmm. 70s and 80s stuff, that stuff, like you're paying a dollar, two dollars in a bin mm-hmm. at one of these op shops. Yep. The Germans pay top dollar for them. Do oh really? my god! And even some of the guys from the US. And and I've got guys that hit me up and go, "Oh man, can you find me um, uh, whatever the first Barnsey solo album was? Um, it might have been self titled. No, no, it was swing, swing. No, oh, anyway, whatever." Um, and he's like, yeah, it has to be this variant. It was a, it was like the first variant of uh, the mushroom release, blah, blah, blah. And it's got this sort of uh, matrix run on it, et cetera, et cetera. So here I am in the op shop and I've like got the cat number. I'm like, okay, that's a, so, all right. So we're, we're in the right lane here. Now I have to go further down. So I'm picking the CD out and like trying to navigate it under the light to try and see what the matrix run on the, on the inside is. And I'm like, oh, bingo, ding, 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 ding. And so I'm like, yep, done. And so... Yeah, you know, a two dollar CD. I'm selling it for 40, 50 bucks. Wow! And it's just so cool. But the same sort of thing. It's like for us here. I mean, not only Australian artists, but popular, mass produced. Mm. Um, some of them are harder to find because they were probably first pressing or first or second pressing. But um, you know, for us, it's yeah, you know, it's a dime a dozen. And the average Joe doesn't give a shit. It's just like no. a, it's a Barnsley CD. There's, if you're passionate about it and you know this, the market, like I, I got vinyl. Yeah. And I had. Um, I've never played any of them. 
yeah ever yep. like i just didn't want to waste or scratch them and you know i've collected chili peppers and all that sort of stuff i was a massive chili peppers fan anyway i had um probably about a thousand vinyls sitting wow. in this room and it was just accumulating and i'm not talking like a thousand killer vinyls i'm yep. talking a thousand readers Everything. digests and ballads of the uh, banjo right. boys okay. and all you know like <laughs> there was all sorts of scott on the brave and all this yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. stuff but it's all from you know great aunties and whatever else yep. but then there was some gems in there as well and you know dudes would move out of the state and they'd say mm. oh, i have my collection and i just keep piling them up in the corner so one of the places that i work at or was working at um we were doing uh, they have like a hip-hop class and so i donated a thousand vinyls oh, of like random stuff and said hey boys can you get samples and shit off this stuff if you can there's a thousand vinyls go your hardest so oh, wow. they actually yeah. they took them all um i let them sell whatever they needed yeah. to be able to buy some more decks or whatever mm -hmm. like you know do what you need to do with it yeah. but here's a thousand vinyls and there's nothing in there that i want i kept, I kept what i mm. needed and i don't collect a lot anyway yeah. um but yeah i just gave them away and just went here you go and pay it forward you know what i mean like i yeah. I, I think that's the same you know my daughter just yesterday she went out into an op shop and she's come home with all these vinyls i'm like what are you, what are you doing she's like i just wanted blue labels i'm like blue labels on a vinyl like didn't care what they were yeah right, just well. wanted blue labels i'm like what do you want blue labels for and she's like oh well because then it'll look um it'll look cool when i put them on my wall so she's decorating her wall with like yeah, vinyl right. records and stuff she's only 16. yeah and uh yeah so she's like color color coordination yeah, yeah she had yeah. like red label ones and blue label ones i'm like did you need any other color label ones because yeah. i've got plenty up the back <laughs> I, you know i was going to give her kevin bloody wilson or something like that just to, <laughs> or you know uh channel what's the uh wide world of sports or, oh yeah yeah i got yeah. all those oh, i got wow. chisel i got all sorts of stuff that i don't really i don't really i'm not attached to them yeah, you know yeah. chili peppers and beetles different i'm attached yeah yeah but this other stuff i you know i've got a fair amount of like stevie wonder and mm. shirley bassey and you know the old yeah, soul yeah. type stuff because yeah. i love all that too but you know um collect that's the problem with being a collector i guess there's you know there's a lot of stuff in my in my collection that the the other half doesn't really uh approve of but <laughs> you know it's not in the house <laughs> well, it's, yeah i mean it's a tough one because it's always like it, it becomes a bit of an ocd thing as well where it's sort of like well I've, I've got to complete that mm -hmm. and then that sort of might tie into another theme or another sort of sub sub interest or whatever and mm -hmm. so you sort of like it's like well where, where does it end and so you keep going keep going and eventually you sort of look around and go oh man like i've got all this stuff and it sort of looks impressive then you think oh how much of this do i actually care about and mm -hmm. then it's that whole letting go of things which is really hard yeah, as right. well you just Big like time. oh man like what's what's my life going to be without these things and then eventually sort of realize like if you haven't thought about it in at least the last year or so chances are you'll never think about mm -hmm. it again or if you do if it comes into your mind it won't be won't be a big yeah. deal but um i've i've like ch turned over collections for years and and i still sell a lot of stuff online and like mm. discogs and ebay and things like mm -hmm. that um but uh, i've still got like my my treasure trove yeah, of like of course. The, the the really special stuff which will either hold a really good memory of some somewhere in my travels or something that's being autographed or just something that's just super like in my in my own head super rare yeah might not be valuable or anything no, like that not. but just it's, it's so cool it's a it memory awesome. the yeah. memory is what it is for me you know like i i lost all of my toys when i was maybe 10 we moved house one box went missing oh, you no. know and it was the one box that had all my gold in it oh um and then uh didn't have any of my stuff i still had my original motu mm. master of the universe like because that was my brothers and mine yeah you know? but my actual own toys my own comics all disappeared and we only moved three kilometers Ugh. so go figure but as soon as i got my first job it was like all right i'm going to start rebuilding my phantom collection and start buying trading cards and wow. you know i was buying cartons of trading cards like sealed boxes, the boxes and then yeah. going oh. home and you know putting them sets together what a rush. it was so good my brother before he passed that was his kind of pastime he saw yeah. me doing it and he had a brain tumor from the age of three so oh, he wow. he died at age 27. yeah um but towards the end of his life he was kind of you know, he'd go oh can you take me down to the local and we'd go down to the to the shop and he'd just buy boxes of cards and then he would go home and he would sort them 
yeah. that was fun because he didn't have much vision left because okay, it was yeah. a brain tumor right yeah. on his optic nerve. So oh, geez, he was losing his eyesight, mm. but he would set them up. And it was only after he left because he gave me the cards before he passed and said, look, I want you to make sure they go to a good home, all mm. this sort of mm. stuff. And I'm like, you know, got a tear in the eye and all mm. that sort of stuff. But I took him home and he had a heap of basketball ones, like a ton. And a couple of the boys that I tour with mm. um, in the th with Thump Music, at the time I was only helping them out and I didn't yeah. buy the car, I own the company now. But the um, the, t the two guys were like massive b-ball fans, you know, like NBA Central, right? Yeah. So I flew up to the Queensland with 10 kilos of <laughs> basketball cards and just went, that, I didn't know what was in there. So mm. there was, you know, you name all the good cards, they yeah. were all in there, everything yeah. was in there. And I said, look, my brother wanted us to have a good time with these. Mm you guys you know let's get some video and i've got somewhere a couple of minutes or you know maybe five minutes of video of these guys like wigging out to some of the old yeah, well. basketball cards from the 90s and early eight or late 80s um and then you know one of my mates is pulling out all the oh another jordan card oh another jordan like yeah. rare ones too yeah. you know i'm like yeah well they're not they're not for me i don't care yeah, yeah. and we had fun with them so you know that memory is i've succeeded and i've done what i was asked yeah, to do yeah. but the rest of the cards i was, remember going through and i'm like man what are you blind or something like because <laughs> putting the cards i'm like you're missing this card it's, it's sitting right there you know <laughs> and i remembered of course yes yeah. you know his sight was crap so mm. um but yeah found lots of cards and i've actually been going through you know he collected marvel and he mm. had phantom and he had x files and you name all the cards coke yeah, uh, right. betty page he loved a bit of uh you know the uh the lady cards oh yeah <laughs> um, but i've gone through and i've actually re i'm in the process of rebuilding the sets oh, really? okay, star yeah. wars yeah. star trek you name it he had everything because it was what he liked doing so he bought everything so I've been going up on Facebook groups and like, you know, hey, I'm looking for these cards and dudes are hooking me up, I'm buying them, filling the sets. So I'm keeping a set of everything um, that he had mm. and then all the multiple sets that he had, I'm letting them go that'll help yeah. fund the ones that we need. And then that'll give a, a full set for my kids. That's excellent. So, That's three, so cool. my three kids are, you know, going to be taking hold of my collection and my brother's collection at the same time. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the plan. I don't want to have to sell it. Yeah, if I can help yeah, it, of course. it's, uh, it's taking too long. The comic, it's actually mostly comics. Mm. I've got about, um, 20,000 comics in the set in oh, the collection. 20,000. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't even know what that would look like. Uh, it's ridiculous. Do you have an, like an, uh, a plane hanger? Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's pretty close. Um, it's, it's, uh, a studio, like a, a large shed that I've had yeah. lined as a studio. And um, lateral filing cabinets, yeah. so like two drawer lateral filing cabinets. Uh, I've got fifteen of them lining the walls, and they're all individually bagged and boarded yeah, and catalogued, yeah. and you know, my God, it's a uh, it's pretty impressive. Oh. I love I love having it. Um, I I don't go into it anywhere near enough. Yeah. There's a lot of gems amongst it, and the gems come every day. You know, like the Morbius has just been announced as a new movie. Morbius has just gone up in price. You wow. know, that's cool. I, I have it; it's no problem. And it's almost yeah. like it's almost like your own version of the of what the stock exchange in, in your shed, like just Pretty watching much. watching the value of of your shares. Yeah, your your assets going going up and down. Well, it actually on... goes. It actually grows more than what your normal shares do. Yeah. That's... So the percentage per year on comic books going up on the right books, mm. of course, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like t over 20%. Wow. So you can, if you've got the right ones, you know, and you've bought them low and you can try a lot of my guys trade them. Mm. I don't like, let them go. Once yeah. I've nailed one, I'm like, it's staying, you yeah, know, definitely. I, I learned that one probably three years ago, yeah. went to America for the first time and took a whole heap of my gold books with me. And I traded for like a, a better book, mm. one book. And I was like, you're an idiot. I could have kept, you know, 10 good ones yeah. but i come home with like a first appearance of wolverine hulk 181 and it was like yeah i'm cool with that you yeah. know? and I, I haven't regained the other books that i had yeah. but they're easier to get than the hulk one so mm -hmm. i was like eh, it's worth it wow. you know that's i mean just like i was i was big on the trading cards when i was a kid and, yeah and um you know just, how much fun were they well it was you know it, for me it just it changed my world it's sort of like I went through a few different phases because it was like 
it was trading cards and I think that sort of brought me into this whole thing of I can um, I've never actually articulated this before so I'm trying to work it out as I, as, I, as I say it but it was almost like I was able to have some responsibility over something where I could build something up and then make des decisions around you know those missing cards go for a mm -hmm. hunt what would be the best way of doing this having to interact with people in mm -hmm. order to to trade you know and absolutely and, and understanding that there's a level of uh quality that's needed with your cards you got to look after them i remember mm -hmm. going into i don't think it was ever in i'm not sure if it was ever in south australia but it was a, a chain of stores in queensland in the 90s called what's new mm -hmm. and it was sort of like a uh, just a knick-knacky shop that had a whole bunch of random stuff in it and um, when South Park was massive when that first yeah. exploded they had all the toys in there so it was all sort of alternative sort of stuff and a lot of pop culture things in there but they had a little glass desk a um, little cabinet up the back of the shop and there was a guy who stood behind the counter he was the trading card guy and this mm -hmm. is when everything was starting to explode and I remember going in there and I was in primary school and I had a bundle of cards and there were uh, I'm pretty sure the Jurassic Park cards, and they were the first cards I ever collected. And mm -hmm. I had them wrapped up in uh, a rubber band and they were all, all the corners were wrecked, they were bent. And then obviously the rubber bands like chewing into the, into the sides into of the, the cards. Uh, yep. And I wanted to see what they were worth. And the guy just looked at me and goes, mate, he goes, they're not worth anything. And I was just like, oh, shattered. I was yeah, heartbroken. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what do you mean? Like I've collected them all. They're all here. And he's like, he goes, you gotta look after them, mate. He goes, you can't do that. And mm -hmm. he was, and he was trying to teach me a lesson, but he was, he, I, at least from my point of view, and I was like early primary school, it felt like the guy was giving me a real serve. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, oh. And then he's like, yeah, you need the ultra pro sleeves, you need this, blah, blah. You get, get one of these uh, plastic sort of card holder cases where you can stack them in there. He said, you've got to take care of them. He said, they're, otherwise they're worth nothing. And I went, oh, okay. And then I walked out. I was like sort of tearing up. Oh. But it sort of taught me that, you know, you got to take care of your shit, you know? So suddenly I had exactly. more responsibility over it. And then... And then once I discovered basketball trading cards, then it just it just went to another level. It was just incredible because around that time Beckett started to get really popular. Yeah, um, we used to go to the, the Sunday morning fates or uh, sort of markets Car and there'd be sales. And yeah, stuff, yeah, and so the guys would have their tables out with all their collections and everything, and so you would start negotiating with people, and and they'd be like, well. Um, what have you got? So you open up your folder and I've got this Patrick Ewing card. And so he goes down the back and he goes, well, for us, we halve the prices or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. um, this would be $12.50, but you know what? I, I'm not going to pay 12 bucks, mate. So I'll, I'll buy it for, for six. And I'll, and here's me like, I don't know, nine years old or something going 10. <laughs> and not, not knowing, but I just know not to accept the first thing. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, right kid. And I'm like, yes, like this. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. it was just the back and forth. But, but that, that whole art of flipping and the whole art of like negotiation is, oh. you know, that's a killer thing. A lot of people, there's a lot of sharks out there. Yeah. You know, even now, mm. you know, you try and find people buying collections or you want to sell some stuff and yep. they just lowball you all the time, you know? And it's the one thing that I kind of don't do mm. is... I'll go in fair. I'm not going to pay retail, but mm. I'm going to pay fair and I'm yep. going to pay better than what most other people are going to pay. Mm. But I also will walk away from it because yep. I'm not, you know, I'll find it, it somewhere else, yeah. you know, It'll pop but up. a lot of my stuff, I don't actually buy a lot in Australia anymore. Mm. Um, I've kind of not fished it out, but this, my, I've diversified. Yep. So the stuff that I normally collect is not necessarily as easy to get here or it's not available here anymore. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, 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 I've certainly noticed that with music. Um, mm -hmm. Like I've, <laughs> well, actually I did with basketball cards as well. When basketball cards took a downturn and people started get, getting over and they weren't as popular, they didn't hold their value here. I started cleaning up everyone's collections. I remember going to a guy's place in Queen, in when I was living in Queensland and mum drove me there. And he was this older guy and, and he's like, yeah, man, he goes, oh, fuck, you can take him, man. And he, it was in the trading post or something like that. And so, yeah, a little classified in the newspaper. And I'm like, mom, take me here. I've got the money. <laughs> and it was like, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks. And he goes, yeah, he had this like old fruit box and he just chucked the cards in there. They weren't in sleeves or anything. Oh, wow. And he goes, mate, look, they're probably worth nothing, but there's a whole bunch in there. They're all doubles for me. So they're just, he goes, I don't think they're worth anything, but have them. And I'm just looking at it going, oh, 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 what's in there? What's in there? Then he goes, oh, I've got these folders here. And he goes, look, I've got one here. He goes, 
has made I, I love to I love, love to collect Jordan Jordan cards. So I've got a I've got a folder just of Jordan cards there. So yes, yeah, th these things used to be worth heaps, but they're worth fucking nothing, mate. So as yeah, just go for it. And I'm like, oh cool, okay, thank you. And just in the back of my head going, uh, poker face, poker face. So then like and then getting into the car, loading it. Mum's like. Oh my God, how many are there? And I'm like, mum, shush. And so yeah, I'm yeah, sitting yeah. In, the, in the seat and I'm <laughs> opening up this Jordan folder. And it is, I mean, mind you, it doesn't have the rookie cards or anything like that. No, of course. But there's like 10 pages at least of just all very uh, variations of different Michael Jordan cards. It's like mm -hmm. sort of mostly 90s stuff, actually all 90s stuff. And I'm just going, oh my God, like, oh, oh, geez. And then he had one where it was all special edition cards in a folder. Yeah. All the insert cards. I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And this guy just, he lost the, what he thought the value was in it. And so he's like, get rid of it. Just Declutter. Lost, yeah. But the same with music. And so, you know, I've, I've had a lot of really generous mates who have gone through the whole decluttering thing and said, look, I don't, I don't want them, man. Like, so you can have them and it's up to you what you want to do with them. You keep them. And some of the stuff collection, like I look at it and go, oh, I cannot get rid of this. Awesome stuff. And other stuff I'm like, chuck it on Discogs and see what happens. Mm. And and you know there are a few guys I've, I've got a little community of people that will constantly check my page and see mm -hmm. if i've added anything and they'll buy stuff off me on the regular but most of them are overseas does discogs work for you discogs is fucking yeah the mint for us really? it's so good because i think the difference between something like that and a marketplace like ebay ebay is for it's it's not niche it's just a general marketplace mm -hmm. and so you'll find people that just don't understand or don't have the that level of detail or interest Whereas Discogs, it's totally, it's it's also a platform where you put your, your collection in there as well. Right. So you so you don't have to sell anything. You can just basically report, like record your entire collection in there. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about, uh, so what's, what's an album? Say ACDC, Back in Black. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that and then it will show you every single variant and it's all uh, contributor, uh, contributor yeah, sort of yeah. thing. There's so, a comic book one like yeah. that. So yeah. And so... And toy as, one. So as you find stuff, you look and see if it's in there. And if it's not, then you add in an entry and then everyone sort of vets it. And there's a little approval thing as well. Wow. And so you'll pick back in black and there might be 180 variants of this particular release. And so then I go, okay, so catalog number, country of origin. So I'm looking, okay, all right, so that's it. Then I drill down into that and I'll go, okay, so now there's 10 variants of that, looking at the matrix and things like that. And then once you click down into that particular one, it will show you sales history. Mm -hmm. It'll show you the average, so and the ones that are currently on sale and what the average is and what the highest it's sold for, the lowest it's sold for, and it's all graded, so wow. condition as well. Uh -huh. So you you know the value of it, like the yeah. true value yeah. of it. And so there are there are people on there that are just, and they've got want lists. So you get alerted when one of your want items comes up for, for sale somewhere in the world. Okay. And so, yeah, you got guys who just, they they're looking to fi fix their their collections up, fill yeah, in the yeah, gap, yeah. and they'll pay they'll pay the dollars. And I'm just like, man, the stuff that I bought when things were first released in a limited edition, and over the years I sort of kind of go, well, then they're, they're not really, it, it doesn't really mean anything to me anymore. It's not of no interest. And then I go, oh, we'll have a look. I'll chuck it on the marketplace, and I go, oh fuck, it's worth four hundred dollars. Okay, oh, and wow. I go, well, look, I'll chuck it on for three fifty and see what happens. Like. An hour later, boom, sold. Really? I'm like, oh, jeez. So it's <laughs> crazy. It's super cool because you're you're hitting the target market straight away. Yeah, like they yeah. know what it is instead of just throwing it into somewhere like eBay where it's like you just hope you find the right person. It's like pissing in the wind, isn't it? Yeah, Same yeah, type yeah, of thing. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So um, toy, yeah, the so toy cool. world and comic world is very similar to that. There's different platforms that you can have where it's uh, contributor. Mm -hmm. uh, assessed um and then you've obviously got grading and you know yep. where they slab comics mm. so they vault them and grade them professionally and all that sort of stuff wow. i have i have a fair amount of those like yeah. i might have like 70 yeah of those but i only started collecting them recently because mm. it was kind of like well i don't have super i'm self-employed mm. so uh you know if I just keep putting, and it's the same with toys, like, you know, anyone that has super can't get their super out yep. to be able to save something. But if I need to get some cash quick, I can flip a coin real quick mm. and, and flip something to get it, you know, um, if I need to, mm -hmm. I don't want to, of course, it's, but, it's, but it's a peace of mind knowing that you can, absolutely, if, if something goes absolutely. Wrong. And yeah. that's, that's real. And I get to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, what, what does your super do? You don't, you don't see it. You get a piece of paper once a year saying, Hey, it's gone up this much or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah. Whereas, um, the toys like, you know, you hang them on a wall, you know, um, hunt them down, complete them. You know, normally you buy a loose figure and then you got to try and find 
weapons and armor and all that sort yeah. of crap for them. But that's what I did with the Motu one. Um, and I've a hundred percent completed a hundred percent of the figures and play sets and vehicles and everything, like every little thing that came with each figure I've got. So do you like, so with, cause obviously I, the thing I always remember with sort of toys and action figures is like, if you can, if you can get them in the original sort of boxing and things like uh -huh. that, that's, that's like, that's the gold right yep. there. But obviously things like what you're saying is that you're, you're finding a, a figure and then you're find, trying to find the accessories because the original accessories with that are probably long gone. Yeah, they've been yeah, thrown yeah. away yeah. or in the trash or whatever. Yeah. So you're trying to obtain all these, uh, sort of individual items to attach to it. But what are you doing as far as like, I, do you have like display cases where you, these are all set up or not, they sort of not packaged the away? <laughs> not at the moment. Like, well, how big is it's, the it's, shed? It, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, it's big. Mm. Um, so the shed's probably oh, be close to 60 square meters. Yeah, really. Wow. Um, and it's wall to wall on all four walls to the ceiling. Um, pretty full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you know, there's tubs, you know, like totes and stuff yep. like that. Yep. Um, so most of my Masters of the Universe I don't have on show. Mm. Um, and I've got some of them, I've got multiple figures because I've got the variants and yeah, all that sort of yep. stuff too. Uh, I've got you know, Thundercats as well, which was another line I loved. And getting those play sets and stuff, you know, right. it costs a packet to get them, but yeah, yeah. You know, just get them, you know. Yeah. Um, but completing them. So because I had Masters of the Universe when I was a kid and I've still got those childhood toys, mm. I decided that I didn't want to collect Mint on card. Yeah, okay. um, or graded or any yeah. of that stuff. I just wanted to complete the set yeah. and I want to see them how I would have played with them. Yeah, cool. So that one, I dropped the ball and said, no, before that I was collecting mint on card of everything as much as I could get. Mm -hmm. Whatever I wanted to buy, it was always on card or in a box yeah. or, and it got sta it stayed in it. You know, I collect Mr. Potato Heads. Yeah. I've got stacks of them all in boxes. I won't touch <laughs> them, you know? Yeah. Um, but they look cool, mm. but you, your collection starts to look like a fucking shop, you know, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. everyone comes in and goes, oh, it's pretty clinical or, you know, it's yeah. a, bit, uh, a bit bloody schooly, you know, mm. nah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. So we end up, um, I started getting into the loose stuff as well. And sometimes the loose stuff, it's actually easier to buy Rochi mint on card or not mint on card, mm. uh, Rochi and crack it. So you get all the shit on it like right. all the bits yeah but you know you might not even be able to see what the figure is because the plastic's yellowed so mm. much or whatever but um i've got mates that do that and they they then they pull it off the card like that and then they'll spend two hours cleaning the toy it hasn't even been in the daylight i'm like uh i'm not that crazy you know but we do re we re-leg them with proper bands and all yeah, sorts right. of stuff yeah, yeah. gi joes as well they do that oh, I, don't, yeah, I don't do gi i don't have gi joes in my collection yeah. but i know guys you know they go out and they Rio ring them and make sure yep. that they're all rigid edge. And I'm just learning about them at the moment, actually. I don't mm. know anything about G.I. Joe. Yeah, I had, a, I had a bunch when I was a kid, but I never sort of, um, oh, like I couldn't recall what's what, but um, like I'm on Twitter and there's, uh, oh, I can't remember the, the, the actual Twitter handle, but it's basically G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. And so all this person does is just post pictures of the, the original G.I. Joe's yep. and the names and then they'll show the back of the packet and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, wow, oh my God, like I forgot that even was a thing. Like yeah, it's it's yeah. just a total sort of throwback, a flashback. Um, but yeah, super cool. And it just, it just relives so many memories. And I, and I assume that's probably a big thing for you is just like, it's, it's such a cool nostalgic thing to be able to hold on to a lot of your past mm. so that when you look at something, it's not just, well, this is fun it, and obviously complete yeah. collections, but yeah, there's, of course. There's, there's a lot no, I think it. it's more like, you know, cause I lost them all when I was younger, mm. I wanted to re rebuild them again. Yeah. And because I didn't have much when I was a kid, the ones that I wanted when I was a kid, after I've been, while I'm on the hunt for the rebuild, oh, I like that. I'll yeah, grab yeah. some more of that, you know? So I never owned a Thundercat ever but i loved that tv show when yeah. i was a kid and i remember it fondly so it was like yeah i'll get a few figs and then now i'm missing like you know maybe two pieces from the whole collection the vintage yeah. 80s toy line you know it's like jesus that's where'd that come from you know yeah. and why is my wallet empty you know <laughs> it, this stuff's going up and that's the problem is it's it's catching on but it's the guys that are in our age group that yeah. are starting to come back i i can't see why trading cards wouldn't do the same mm. i can't see the same you know it's like the whole fads when you're going to school you know yo-yos and yeah. kites and marbles and stuff 
all of that just goes around in circles, man. Yeah. And because we're now able to afford it for ourselves and, you know, I don't have, I don't collect cars. I don't have a flash car. Mm. I don't, you know, I'm not into Hot Wheels or any of that sort of stuff. I know plenty of dudes with massive beards that collect that stuff, mm. you know. Mm. But um, when they come around and see my collection, they just kind of go, holy shit. Yeah. Like Brave Star or Ninja Turtles or Brave. Conan the Adventurer yeah. or, you know, uh, Dark Crystal or... Yeah. Um, the journey to the west monkey magic oh, yeah. figures wow, like they never yeah. even got released in australia and i managed to get like a prototype version of them you that know so cool. battle of the planets you remember that one uh, no, I don't know bit before name. voltron yeah I got Cowboy voltron a team yeah. wow you know cowboys of moo mesa there's oh all yeah sorts. yeah there's wow. all sorts <laughs> did you um did you ever dabble with dino riders or anything like that my Best mate has a near complete set of Dino really? Riders. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, I, he army builds them. Oh, <laughs> fire. that is so cool. Yeah, because I remember, I remember they when they became really popular. I think my parents got me. It must be my fifth or sixth birthday, and they got me the Brontosaurus thing. And I just couldn't believe it. It was just such a massive thing for this little kid, like just going, that's "Oh a, my god, that's a big toy." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And like, and and I think I just trash a stupid thing. Like, I just total regret because I just. Like it, it was all sort of fitted out with armor and uh -huh. missiles and stuff like that. And so uh -huh. each little piece just ended up sort of getting chewed on or getting thrown away or whatever it is. Vacuumed and I think, up. <laughs> and I think eventually I dropped it and then the, the neck broke off and oh. then it was just like, it was just uh, it was tragic. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember those. So that was super cool. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I have seen them because yeah. I go to his place and see, you know, they're not fully set up, but mm. I know that he's, you know, he army builds. He does Jurassic Park as well. He's yeah. a massive dinosaur guy. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars figures as well. And, you know, so that's that's the other side of it is that you go around and you have, like, catch-ups and you do, like, meetups and stuff where you can do trade days and um, big sales. Adelaide has the biggest uh, toy fair in the country, I believe, in, yeah, really? in the middle of June. Okay. And people from all over Australia come to it. Yeah, well, okay. And uh, it's mega. Yeah. It's the mega toy fair held at the showgrounds. It's, uh, yeah, it's big. Last year for our, for our page, our Facebook group, we um, set ourselves a challenge. Mm. We had the 20 bucks limit and you had to buy the ugliest toy you could find. And then we <laughs> unveiled it and did, a, so did cool. a poll and stuff, you know. So we, we just have fun, you yeah. know, like it there's no rhyme or reason mm. one one of them i so everyone knows i'm a massive comic book guy mm. and so we did a competition where if you sent in your shittiest comic um to us with a note on it you know a love note or whatever mm. uh, we would burn that comic and give you two comics in return <laughs> and everyone's like what the fuck are you doing i'm like well, they're, they're going to send me their shittiest comics, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've got, you know, a local guy that we know um, from Dark Oz Comics. He, we bought, he did like a Kickstarter. Mm. And I bought PDF copies, you know, five copies of two books that he released. Uh, and they're, they're mature readers only. They're mm. pretty v vile, and yeah, yeah. but they're awesome, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's un like underground type okay, stuff. Yeah. And so... I had five, I had five copies of the books to, to give away and I had five people enter. I was like, that's all I need because we've only just started, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it was like five people. Yeah, cool. I had one guy from America, Vaughn. He sent one in and he knows I'm a Thundercats collector. Yeah. So he sent a Thundercats comic <laughs> and wrote, die, thunder pussies, die on the front. <laughs> I was like, you prick. <laughs> so we had a massive bonfire at a mate's house and I actually did a live stream of me throwing thunder. them on the fire oh, wow. and then sent them all copies of the pdfs but yeah that one everyone's like what the hell are you doing i'm like you collect comics i'm like yeah but i that's not what it's about yeah you know? it's fun just shits and giggles you know <sighs> we do we so do fun. uh the double camo challenge you know when you walk around the center and you see some dude wearing double camo or whatever yeah you get a sneaky photo and my counter my mate he he would send you if you could get a, a double camo photo uh of someone wearing double camo and you send it into us he would send you a double camo uh gi joe action figure oh. in return wow so we did that and we had i think we gave away about six yeah and all around australia there's dudes oh. like hunting people with double camo on <laughs> quick quick get a sneaky photo some, just for something to do that's you know? cool i like that stuff just stupid shit like we challenge each other all the time which which action figure had the dirtiest mustache you know or that sort of stuff just crazy banter Oh, that's giving me so many ideas for like even our band, like just oh, absolutely, like set, setting these little challenges for people to go out, mm -hmm. almost like a little uh, 
little Easter egg hunt, you know, mm -hmm. and if they can they can get these particular things and then check back in and they can they can redeem something exactly yeah i like that that's yeah. cool it's just it just creates content it's yeah. good fun you know we're, we're on camera it's community building as well it's community exactly yeah. and we don't sell on our page mm. so we only do community we set up our own page purely because we're not really safe for work yeah. like the language comes out yeah um and you know it's unfiltered yeah, yeah so there's no doctoring at all it's yeah, cool. on the fly every friday yeah. night and you know you'll get guys from all over the world that'll be like play us a song or sing a song or <laughs> hang shit on gym or something like that it's, yeah we just do you know yeah, cool. so it's uh it's an interesting fun it just makes the night brighter you know yeah it's good especially mm. if you've got like a weekly thing anyway like uh I, I know heaps of people over the years have got like a little weekly catch up with a mate or something like yeah, that and so exactly. it's sort of like as you said you sort of looked at each other and went well why don't we why don't we sort of up the ante here yeah like, exactly cool. so it's a it's, it's you've already the got camera. the routine yeah i mean if you've got an iphone or a phone yeah. you know smartphone turn the camera on easy hit the live button and you're off like it's really that easy yeah. we we've upped it since then mm. we've got mm. you know proper studio cameras and stuff but it's the same thing we, mm. we did have platforms running so you could have like yeah. a bit like the twitch type mm set up and everything yep. but um it got too hard and we wanted to make it so that it was kind of dumb proof for me to be able to just turn it on and go um because my mate that comes in to help us with all that he only comes fortnightly okay. so one week it'll be like full production looks mm. killer you have all these overlays going in and all this sort of crazy stuff and he'll throw up you know links and stuff when we're playing he'll put up like youtube links into the yep. lives and stuff um and then the following week it's just me and Jim sitting on the couch with my phone at the back, <laughs> going lo-fi. It's only only because I don't know how to run everything yeah. yet. I'm learning it because the the camera we've got runs off my phone, mm. and so we can actually it takes multiple screenshots. Like you can set four different points on the actual one camera, mm. and it's almost like you're switching cameras. Yeah. So, um, but you have to kind of be looking in your lap all the time and that looks yeah. a bit ominous when you sit next to your bestie are you, yeah, it's like, uh, uh, where are you where yeah. are those eyes wandering yeah dutch rudder style or something <laughs> yeah, are you guys mic'd up at all uh mics? we use um so when we just do the the phone only we just yeah. use the phone yeah um but we do lapel mics yep. um when we're doing with a little mixer mm -hmm. and we just run back to that just so we can clean up the sound yeah cool um and then we run like a you know like a 42 inch screen that runs to the computer back out so we can read the messages that are coming That's through cool. to the live so yeah, awesome. we're sitting on the couch and we've got all these big screens and stuff i've got i've got photos you know of what our setup looks like it yeah. looks like not much different to what you've got yeah but yeah. um obviously cameras and stuff yeah. but yeah a couple of tripods and and a couple of lapel mics and off we go so well i'm i'm uh, in the process of because um jess and i moved back up to sydney so we've been in piermont mm -hmm. for oh i don't know getting closer to six months but um I've got a little office there and I've actually started to set it up. So I've got a sort of a little studio thing mm -hmm. happening. So I've got all my, all my desk mics and everything set up, ready to go. I'm just uh, get waiting for a, a uh, sound card mixer thing to, to rock up. Um, but my, my big thing is going to be, um, video. Mm -hmm. So I've got, I've got a, um, oh, what would he be? I'm trying to think of how it works. Uh, uncle in law, maybe mm -hmm. that'll work. It's Jess's uncle? Yeah, uncle in law. Why not? Sounds like. Yeah, I just never used that term before. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so he works in uh, in video production. He does a lot of stuff for TV commercials and all that. And he's, mm -hmm. he's turned around and said, oh, look, I'll come over and help you set it up. And I'm like, oh, cool. So, But I'll, I also want to be able to do something that's still low budget in the sense that he doesn't just come over and say, yeah, you can borrow my stuff, but I'm going to need it back mm. like during the week or whatever mm. it is. It's something that I can just have pretty much, it's a press plug, plug and play. And play. Yeah, and that's just, what we went for. And... Um, I've already had a couple of people over just to have a chat and it's just been on the couch or whatever. Um, but I'm like central Sydney now. So it's like the amount of people that come and go and visit or whatever, it's just mm -hmm. like, you can come and visit me and sit mm -hmm. down and then I can just flick the switch on and you can go either to Facebook or YouTube or both or whatever it might be. And, um, yeah. And just, and just an extra dimension to the podcast. But mm -hmm. so it's interesting, like just hearing you say that, cause it's like, yeah, yeah like, um, it's, it's fun. And I think it just makes it more interactive and, even like for you you're doing it's like it's a stream it's it's live so yeah, people yeah. are interacting but even for me like if it's a delayed thing i think people still can feel that they're still a part of what's oh, going absolutely. on absolutely interacting yeah so, just, so we, we yeah. might only have 20 
maybe 20, 25 people on the live mm. when we're live, which is not that much. Yeah. But when we put it out and share it to the other groups that yeah. we're on, you know, you end up with thousand views a week. Mm. Like so good. people, and it, they might not stay for the whole time. They yep. might, you know, play around or whatever. Yep. But um, it, it, you know, we tag people in there. We put up stuff. So last night, I haven't done them yet, but last night's show, we were talking about a, a fundraiser for the bushfire okay. uh, yep. that's you know, raising money for bushfire awareness or relief or whatever. Mm. Um, and there's a group of like comic book creators that have got together and made like an anthology type thing. Oh, really? Well, 20 cool. bucks, yeah. you know five bucks post but it gets donated mm. so we we pump that out and that's the thing that we kind of we're a bit of a community announcement we jump on board most of that stuff anyway yeah. ourselves but just for fun it's more like you know we tell people make them aware i'm doing the dark oz comics challenge at the moment because i've bought every single book my mates produced i've never read one mm. uh, but i love the books they're, yeah. they're amazing so and i obviously i want to support so this year i made myself a challenge i got to read you know two books until they're all done every week so you know i'm on track at the minute just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh back to work next week so that's gonna change it all up but yeah yeah, up the ante then. yeah. that's cool yeah I, I like that stuff and i think the more I've, I've learned over the years like you know even just name dropping people all in the way that are in your network and so then you, then you turn around like last night we were we were chatting about one particular person we sort of gave gave a plug and then i, I sent him a message and said oh hey by the way we we're just talking about you and like you won't go out for, for weeks or whatever yeah. but he's like oh fuck yeah and yeah. he'll be waiting for that now and he'll look yeah, for it and he'll probably exactly. share it and make it make a comment we did the it. same yeah. well, i mean we mentioned you know you guys when yeah. you brought out your new album and all that sort of stuff like that's just what Thank we you, do sir. yeah absolutely <laughs> like you know jump on it early get it done yeah. you know um not just you but you know uh, a monolith's just done their yep. pre-order that got a mention that's going out and we share yeah. that as well like yep. it doesn't matter whether it's pop culture or not. I mean, pop culture can be whatever you want it yep. to be, really. Yep. So we do music and we do, you know, sometimes Jim would be like, oh, I bought a new guitar. Last night he pulled out a banjo guitar and just started strumming shit on the, you know, and everyone's yeah. like, blow us a song, you know, <laughs> just random. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, yeah. you know. It's just, where do we get it from? Or we went to, you know, we always plug the stores that we go to, whether they're a chain store or a small store. We generally go to the small guys, mm. um, unless we can't get it. Um, but, yeah, we always other groups you know if there's competitions to enter and we're not we're not running one at the time or it's a good one get over there and do it you know i think networking is the key yeah. and a lot of people are too scared to network mm. you know i think that's the only way you can move forwards in the world i think it's a bit of imposter syndrome with a lot of that stuff you're sort of reluctant or a bit self-aware self-conscious and you go oh well you know like i i might not be legitimate enough to be start starting to sort of work with other people or mm. collabs and things like that and um but i mean really it's just about talking about each other really yeah i mean it's it's doing things without expecting anything in return but in most cases you do get something in return of course and it, it doesn't matter yeah, or exactly. long term you know? it's like you play the long game it doesn't really matter yeah. you know if someone needs something we know someone that does it it just helps everyone out i mean what you guys are doing is basically like this visual podcast in a way right? pretty much because i mean that's that's the cool thing about what i've been doing over the years is like you know heaps of different people so there's no real theme about it apart from me talking to people um but you know the conversation i could i could write a bunch of notes for somebody that i'm just totally overwhelmed by and i'm go, i gotta get my shit together mm. and i write all these notes out and then i look back after the conversation i realize i haven't even touched them and we've gone off in a completely different direction mm -hmm. but it's still awesome i and, think that's the best part about it and listening into not that, have yeah not have a direction we yeah. we joked last night oh we really should have a production meeting we've never done one <laughs> we just turn the camera on and just talk crap you, just you know it's just we just don't um you know we're like oh we should do this or should do that. nah yeah never happens well it's good it's good for people that are tuning in because it's you know if they don't tune in one week and they miss one then they potentially miss something mm. something unique that will never be discussed yeah, again or right. come up exactly. so you sort of tune in going oh what the hell are they going to be talking about this week mm. or what what what's what have they bought this week or what's rocked up in there in the post yeah. in the post this week that uh we'd never expect you know so yeah. it's kind of and that's that's the fun part as well yeah. it's, like it's like the bringing, unboxing thing just bringing stuff that you know either never came to australia yeah. or no one has ever seen before you know buying customs or like um knockoffs that have mm. never actually made it here or that sort of stuff mm. those sorts of you know i like to try and flip people out and go holy crap where'd that come from yeah. you know like
but I don't do it with just one item at a time. I save all my stuff up with a mate in America and I've got another mate in England and they just build boxes for me. So I just keep piling, piling, piling stuff up oh, with them. Yeah, that's cool. And so well, I end up with a massive box yeah, of yeah. like goodness, but it'll be like a, you know, I think in the early days we were doing like three, four hour boxings, like unboxings, wow. just the amount of crap that was in there. So is it a case that just to get my head around it? You're, sure. So you're going online, looking through some of these marketplaces and you find something, you go, oh, that's amazing. It's located somewhere in the States. You've got a guy, instead of putting your address in Australia, you're giving your mate's address. Mm -hmm. They're sending it through and he's like, yep, cool. Dumps it in the box yep. and just leaves the box basically open in, in a sense and yep. then waits until eventually yeah, your box is full. It's like, all right, we'll ship it, yep. ship it back. Yep, pretty and much. And so you're basically unboxing a whole stack of things. Yeah, a whole heap of sales. And you might forget about something you bought. Oh, like, dude, I'd... I never like every time everyone's like, Oh yeah, sure. Right. I'm like, I don't actually remember. That's why I'm, I'm actually, I'm trying to get back to work so I can get some coin. Cause I want to get <laughs> these two boxes I've got going. Yeah. They've been building for probably six months wow. and I, I need them here cause I don't want to buy anything this year until I know what I've got. And shipping so expensive as well. It is expensive. It's crazy. Yeah. But that's why I bulk it, yeah. you know. And then you get the occasional mate that'll be like, oh, I'm looking for a part like for this. Or can I, you know, do you know someone that can get these shoes or something like that? I was like, mm. no, man, like I'm not doing shoes that's too hard. But yeah. in terms of like figures and stuff or handheld games or, you know, we bought cameras. We bought the camera from America and oh, just wow. shipped that in with the box of stuff, you know. Or we bought black magic cameras from overseas because they were, you know, second hand but still excellent you know That's so we just it's such a good idea it is it's not it's not you know it's just just an easier way there yeah. is there is companies that do mm. it as well mm. but you know i i don't trust someone else unless they're people i know yeah. so i trust my friends and i i trust that they're gonna make sure that my stuff's packed correctly and not going to get broken and that's the only love that I can ask for, you know? I mean, anybody listening can take this idea because I've got no time myself to do it. But I was just thinking about that idea and imagine having like, you know, this network of people that you built relationships mm -hmm. like, you, like you have in all these different countries around the world. Mm -hmm. And you could say to either you find the items yourself or they find them for you. But it's a case of, I want you to fill up a box full of, you know, talking about metal. You go, mm -hmm. well, I've got some mates in India. And I'll say, look, I'm going to give you a few hundred bucks and I want you to go out and buy mm -hmm. all of these things, chuck them in a box and bring them home. Then you do an unboxing video, which basically just runs through Indian metal and mm -hmm. just and go, Oh my God, look at this, check out the artwork, blah, blah, blah. We're going to check that out and read some of the liner notes, like old school, you know, yeah, when you buy yeah. a CD or vinyl and you look at all the artwork and everything. And you can just do that for a whole bunch of different countries around the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. And that'd be super popular. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to, I mean, you could, to make to really up the ante, you would it'd be good to be able to have a sample of a song as you're doing it. Um, that would be a lot of work, but that would that would so really sort of be a point of difference. Absolutely. But, but even without that, just to have a, just the unboxing thing so popular, mm. but to to then have sort of this metal sort of nerdy sort of enthusiast sort of mm. thing to go. Oh, I just got a box in from yeah from India or from Switzerland or yeah, yeah, like yeah, exactly. anywhere. And, yeah, it'd be and amazing. Just, and maybe maybe they throw in some stickers or some random stuff and you sort of laugh and there's a bit of a joke in there or something yeah. like that. Well, yeah. we, sometimes we get guys that will send like a blow up sheep to someone or <laughs> you know, just in the box with yeah. other stuff, you know, just for fun. Or there's one going around at the moment between the different groups that, you know, you put, uh, you can take what you want out of it, but you put the value back in and the uh, box is a traveling yeah. box. So it just oh, yeah. keeps going around. Uh, I had that one come. It's expensive to come mm. this way, but that's cool. I shipped it back to America. Yeah. But um, the, there's one that's going around at the moment that's like artwork only, I think, because it's a bit cheaper to mm. run it. And there's like a blow up Pickle Rick or something. Yeah. And everyone that gets the box signs their name on the Pickle Rick oh, so that cool. at the end is like the guy who started it gets the the pickle Rick that's got everyone's autograph on it. It's a bit like, it's, it's really not so any cool. different to like, you know, chain mail really. Yeah. I mean, similar. that was such a popular thing for, for years. And I guess I didn't even think it'd be still a thing that keep that's yeah, it's just for fun. Yeah. You know, it's just connections, you know, and the networking. Like if I need to part for one of my toys or something, mm. I go to my network, I can hit it up in a couple of groups, usually within the week. If it's not something that's super crazy, yeah. I can have it. You know, I had a guy yesterday, he sent me a message. Hey man, you need these things. They're not available here they're brand new and, he, and i said yeah man i am chasing them and he goes all right give me your address i'll send them over I, no cost 
Yeah. He bought them. He's posted them to me. Would have cost him over 20 US dollars. And he's just like, not nah, present or yours. I'm like, wow. wow. Like, but it's toy karma, you know, yeah. like it's what we do. Yeah. I do the same thing. I ship out crazy amounts of stuff to people. Oh man, I love that. So this is like right up my alley. Cause it's like, I, I love, so one thing that I always do and a few people listening have heard me crap on about this in the past, but when I'm sending out either band orders or my own stuff that I sell, I'm always dumping extra little things in there. It's basketball just a, cards. Basketball cards. I've had them. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, basketball cards. Or, or uh, samplers and yeah, stickers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just stuff that I've accumulated or I've come across and someone's like, oh, I can't get rid of these, these mm. things. They're a waste of space. I'm like, give them to me. Mm. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna add a bit of value to people that choose to buy from myself or the band or whatever. Mm. and and it's so cool, but um, it's such a thrill. I, mean, I just remember doing it myself when I was a kid and like, I'd get something in the mail and there'd be an extra bunch of promo stuff and it's like, oh my God, this is so cool. Exactly, yeah. And yep. um, and the amount of feedback you get from people when like, especially the basketball cards thing, it's just like, I've, I've got a reputation now of, of sending these things. Yeah. But some people who have never interacted with me at all don't know anything about the band. They might buy something off Discogs and they're like, what's with the card? <laughs> like, well, like, And I'm like, and especially because I, I get a little bit OCD with it. So if it's someone from the States, I'll actually look them up on the map if I can't, if I don't recognize the town or whatever, and I'll try and find the nearest NBA city to oh, that wowzers. thing. And, or at least in the, the same state. Yeah, yeah. Because the last thing I want to do is waste a New York's Knicks, New York Knicks card on, uh, you know, someone in California or whatever. Because they're going to go fuck these guys and throw <laughs> yeah. them in the trash. So I want I wanted to go somewhere that they're going to go, hey, fuck us. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. I'll always try to pin the card to to that to that area. Mm. Um, so sometimes it like it, it hits on the head big time. They're like, oh fuck yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. others are like, oh, what's with this? And I'm like, oh, it's alright, just give it to someone else. You know? Yeah, yeah. But um, I had. Um, uh, a quick shout out for a guy called Rowan Buntine. Um, I sort of met him in person, but he plays in a band called Battlegrave in Melbourne and just an absolute legend. I've spoken to him online for a bit. Um, but his brother bought something off me on Discogs uh, a few months ago. I didn't get the connection, even though the surnames there sort of didn't, didn't register. But um, I sent him a card and some other shit <laughs> with some vinyl that he bought off me. And then... Um, I, I got an alert um, from Australia Post saying something in my PO box. So I go, oh, yeah, whatever. And so I get down there and here's this parcel. And I'm like, well, I didn't order anything. What's, what's this? And so I open it up and it's packed full of Star Trek cards, um, <laughs> some Marvel cards. Um, there was oh, something else. It was a really weird random one. And I'm just like, what the hell is this? And I looked in the back and there's Andrew Bunting. And I was like, oh, Okay, and I'm like, that name rings a bell. And so I'm looking through Discord, so I found him, and I'm like, oh, did you send this? And he's like, yeah, man. I, guess, I realize that you're big on the cards thing, so I'm giving you a few more that you can throw in your That's orders. That's awesome. And he goes to, apparently goes to all the markets and buys the most ridiculous cards and boxes, like, like we were saying before. Yeah. And he's like, um, his brother, Rowan, was saying his wife for her birthday or Christmas was given a box of like home improvement cards or something like that for a present from from andrew and and she's like what the fuck am i going to do with these and so there's this running joke that he's got so he's obviously found me and go oh yeah hell yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah that's just, cool man it's that's so, so cool good. like yeah. it's, and it's just a funny thing like yeah. I, I went and got mark furton cards printed like years ago i've got one you've got one yeah <laughs> that's so and good. and I, I don't know how many there are there's probably oh there have to be more than 10 different ones but um I, I don't know when I got them done. It was a few years ago now, but I got, <laughs> like anything, I get overexcited and I overcompensate. Yeah. I got yeah. about 5,000 of them printed because <laughs> I was like, I have big plans. <laughs> and, and so I think at the time, whatever we were selling, whatever the new thing was, I was including a, a packet of them and they're all in there. So people go, oh, what the fuck is this? And Mark, <laughs> didn't, Mark did not know about any of this. Suddenly there's photos of him tagged with these cars. He's like, what are these things? <laughs> There you go. I mean, I've been busy, <laughs> but um, I've I've got so many, and so I have like a, I've got the, in my office. I've got this drawer, and so I pull the bottom drawer open, and then so there's there's a pile of Mark Furt and the cards in there. There's a pile of basketball cards, a pile, pile of sort of miscellaneous cards, and then some other weird like stickers and things like that. So I'll pick like, little things out of each compartment and put them together with the order and ship them off. <laughs> and even with the cards, because some of the stuff in there is is a little bit for for Mark. There's stuff like there's a there's a photo of um because I had a mate of mine do all the photoshopping mm -hmm. and so there's one where he's at he's at a bar with Tony Abbott and he's been sort of photoshopped in there like he's having a beer with Tony Abbott but it, there's a filter over the top where it's like the the gay pride colors the rainbow <laughs> colors 
Now, I won't give that card to someone in the United States because they're no, not going to get it. So no. I'll only give those cards to Aussies. <laughs> um, there's another one where he's sta- we, we're at the airport coming, we're either going to or from um, a gig somewhere, but um, we bumped into the guy from, um, I can't remember the guy's name, Andrew something, he's from Selling Houses Australia, oh, comedy yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Mark loves it. Mark loves that show. It's so funny. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, it's the guy. And so he went over and he goes, and he's saying to me, he goes, go take a photo. I want to get a photo with him. I'm like, okay. So he gets a photo with him and he tried to get this guy to do the horns and he says, no, I'm not doing that. And we're like, oh, come on. And so anyway, he got this photo and so this guy, and I've, I haven't told Mark who does my Photoshop and he's still pushing me. He's like, who the fuck is it? I'm like, I'll tell you. But he got the photo and then he made it look like Mark is coming out of this guy's fly on his trousers, his little tiny Mark thing. And so the, the photo of them together. So that one only goes to people in Australia because uh-huh. anywhere else they'd be like, maybe yeah. UK, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Um, but anywhere else it's like, I don't understand what this is. So then, and then I've got like the National Lampoon's ones and everything like that. Perfect. So. Um, but it's so much fun because I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I get the most bang for buck uh-huh. from a reaction. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Just, and you know, and it's it, a memory. It's so know? cool. And you, and you had like you got those cards sent to you. It's a memory that you you you're going to remember that guy all the time. You that's know? right. Same and, with who you're sending these out to, and obviously Ferton is getting upset about it or whatever. Oh, it's even, it makes he it loves even it. Better. It makes it even better. He secretly <laughs> loves it all, but like he he will still put up it's a the little, limelight. Little fuss. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like oh, what the fuck have you done now? I'm like nothing or i'd ask him a question a really sort of vague question he's like what the fuck for and, I, and then i'll screenshot that just on its own just to stir him up so yeah, yeah he's he's an easy target but good fun yeah absolutely but, um, yeah i mean i love i love that stuff and this this is so cool i mean i didn't expect to be talking about collections for like no uh for an hour or so um and there's obviously heaps of other stuff so i'll i'll have to do a, a round two with you sometime but yeah, so man, absolutely this this stuff's like is right up my alley i yeah. love i love I love the community aspect. I love sort of doing things just for the fun of it, but also, you know, building something that's that you're building a network of people and mm. it's like-minded and it's, it's kind of, it's nerdy, but it's, it's, it's cool. And, um, and like, you know, even with the, what I do with the orders and things like that, it's like, you know, I'm getting, like, I'm amusing myself yeah. for the most part. Yeah, of course. It's for me, like I'm laughing at just building the orders up and packaging them up and, and again, and putting a dumb note in there, depending if I know the person or not, or trying to throw something out there that maybe they'll get, maybe they won't. Mm. Um, but it also like for me, I, I sell more stuff because of it mm-hmm. because instantly it's, it's personalized. Mm-hmm. They, they're suddenly like, maybe some of these guys order stuff all the time. Yeah. Mine will cut through the noise a bit more. It's a bit more memorable. And they're like, Oh, who's this guy? Like what's all this stuff? And there's a handwritten note in there as well. Like what's this? Yeah. It makes a big difference, man. And so suddenly they'll go back and they go, well, what else has this guy got? Yeah. yeah. And so I've got guys that keep coming back and keep. We do the same them. when we do trades with people as well. Mm. Like if you're trading for different figures or if someone hooks you up with something or you, mm. you know, they buy something off you, it's most of the groups that we're in, it's all encouraged that you should do a handwritten note yeah. so that you're connecting as well, not just, you know, being a number and throwing something at someone for the sake of it. It's like you actually want to help them out, you know? I see I, it sounds wanky, but I just see it as a lost opportunity because it's like, I don't know, it's like being somewhere and being introduced to somebody mm. and you sort of... I don't know. You, you you just say hello and that that's it. And you it's don't like forgetting just... their name or not even picking yeah. up their name in the first place. You yeah, know? it's like come it's just, on, you, you, know? you just miss an opportunity. Absolutely. And, and whether you connect or not past that is is another story. But it's just there's the what if. And exactly. I I always write something out, even if it's if it's a mate, I'll write. I'll take the piss out of them or say something funny or something self deprecating or whatever. <laughs> or if it's somebody I've got no clue of, like I'll send stuff to like oh, I don't know, like we're like just Russia or something like that, and you know. The, they probably can't even understand a lot of what I'm writing and, and like chicken scratch writing. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, handwritten. It's horrible. I'm the same. And so, but I'll still try to write something that's somewhat understandable without dumbing it down or anything like that. And it's just something funny and I'll like, I'll throw in some dumb stickers or whatever and just, and but I'll get a message from them in, you know, in broken English or whatever, just going, ha ha, like, what is this or something? <laughs> and so then I'll try and explain it and they just laugh and, and that's it. I might not get anything more, but yeah. That's amusing enough yeah, for me. Yeah, I love exactly. it. It's so cool. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. No, exactly right. Exactly right. Oh, well, my big, my biggest takeaway from this is I think I'm gonna, I've got to convince someone to do the boxing thing for metal stuff. So you know, any of my metal mates um, can do that because um, I'd like to, I'd like to think I could do it, but there's too many things. I've got to stop committing to stuff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and the other thing I'd love to do is, <laughs> I want to do a chainmail thing. I think that's super cool. Mm. I think there's so many ideas off the back of that. 
where, oh man, like if you're putting in some information, well, obviously you're signing off and you're putting your name or whatever it is, mm. and maybe your date or something like that. But if you're putting something in there that's a little nugget of information yeah. that then just gets passed around. Well, you know, it could be, think back to the days of like, you know, mixtapes. Tape you know, trading. Tape trading. Bring Song it, recommendations. Or bring it back, you know. Or, yeah, or a link. Yeah, a link. Like yeah. a link to a, a song or, you know, and it could be one that is not readily available or one that doesn't really, you know, I, I'm a, I always am a sucker for live. Mm. I love live recordings. So, you know, I, I can't bring myself to sell my CD collection yep. um, because majority of it is stuff that you can't get just on mm. the normal you know, Spotify's and stuff. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, I'm like, well, no, nah, I'm going to keep going, you know, I'm always hunting, you know, and everyone's like, what are you buying CDs for? Like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, but CDs is still a thing, you know, yeah. and there's a big talk about it now with movies, like, you know, with Netflix and stuff, like everyone's sold all their movies and now they're taking the movies off of Netflix because the license runs out and now you can't watch it, you know, like you might as well have kept the DVD because it's only worth a buck and just keep it in your, in your system, you know. I get people that live minimalist yeah. and all that sort of stuff. That's fine. But, you know, at least have a little library of... Yeah. If it's if it's that good a movie and you really yeah, like, it, like it or it, that kind of CD, keep it, man. Well, I think I think something that hold, will hold a lot of value, especially in sort of music nerdy circles, is uh, local independent music. Absolutely. Um, where people aren't quite up to the level where they're about to go and stream through spotify and put things mm. out through that um and some people are still very anti that so there's still yeah. a market where they're, yeah, they're doing self-releases and they're just doing it through their own channels mm. and i think buying like the demo cd or the ep or the single and things like that yeah um and sitting on them mm. um is is huge because they're not mass produced they'll never be reprinted most yeah. of them they'll struggle to sell the first pressing and so they'll disappear mm. um and they will be worth something later on. Yeah. And they're not the stuff. And if it might get digitized eventually, or it might, like it's digitized, it might it might end up going into a streaming service down the track, yeah. but it yeah. won't be that original. And, no, that's right. And, and, and I know a lot of it, I mean, we do it as well. Like the last album we released, the first pressing of it, we had three bonus tracks on it, and that's yeah. not on streaming services at all. Yeah. And there's, I think one of the songs might be floating around on YouTube somewhere, but, um, you know, people keep bugging us and going, oh, where, where are the songs? I'm like, you didn't buy the CD. No, like, oh, that's right. I'm like, oh, well, okay. But you can, uh, we made it available for people to down, paid download from Bandcamp so yeah. they can grab yeah. the digital yeah. copy. That's fair. Um, and there's a Japanese bonus track, which is only available in the Japanese one. So yeah, we right. haven't even bothered to repurpose that yet. But, um, but we, you know, Spotify and Apple Music and all that's fantastic. It's great. But um, you want to, like, there's guys who make the effort. So we're like, just... Absolutely. And I think, I think at the end of the day, man, like everyone... Everyone has that little collecting bug, yep. you know. If someone says they don't collect anything, they're There'll lying. Then you know, surely you got shoes, or mm. surely you got handbags, or you know yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah. there's always something. Yeah. Um, it just happens that we do that as well, mm. you know, and and the other stuff at the same time. And my, me being in the music industry too, is like I've always got music, mm. whether it's instruments or you know CDs, vinyl or whatever, and then obviously books that attach to that for yeah. teaching and all yeah. that sort of stuff so music library is massive and i'm slowly trying to cull it you know but the books probably are the easier ones mm. but i can't get rid of the videos i don't want to sell the videos you yeah. know the old yeah, you know the ones from the 90s where yeah. it was like you know the bubble um the reh like come learn billy sheehan and oh, you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. all the, the home things, video networks the and stuff like 60 70 dollars yeah or more bought, yeah yeah because yeah. they're all imported stacks and... of them hey because yeah, well. i just kept i'm like i've still got a video recorder so i'm like mm. yeah i'm not going to get rid of them until the video recorder's gone but i've also gone and bought a backup video recorder <laughs> so you know yeah dvds are great but some of those vhs's you can't a couple of them are on youtube now yeah. but um they're hard to find. They're hard to get. And so I just, if I see someone getting rid of them, it's like, yeah. Same with DVDs, mate. You know, yeah. like if you get someone with music DVDs, I'm kind of like, yeah, I've got half of them, but they're like three, four dollars each. I'll buy the lot. Yeah. And, you know, live in Montreux or whatever like yeah. that, it's like, holy crap, yeah, I'm taking that, you know, yeah. just for fun. And what I've found is that 
um, all those bonus discs. They had the bonus yeah. DVD or, the, or before DVDs, it's like the CD-ROM stuff. Yeah, so yeah. all those uh, MP4s or whatever they were, these videos of interviews or behind the scenes in the studio, or whatever, it's the second disc. Yeah. Um, you know, that stuff's not online anywhere. No, like, And so when I was selling stuff, like I was looking at it going, okay, well, I've got to try and rip this onto a hard drive so I've got it somewhere. Um, but some stuff I just went, nah, I've got, to, I've got to keep it. Like, it's mm-hmm. just, it's, I'm not going to find this anywhere. Nah. And what if my hard drive, you know, exactly. there's a bug on that. I've, nah. I've lost a lot. Exactly. So there's, there's so many things. And the DVDs are interesting because, like, you'd have your main, like, the traditional sort of live concert DVD. You would always have bonus material. Mm-hmm. And that bonus material, I mean, I don't know, maybe there's examples where it's there. But most of the case, it's not the bonus material. It's just the main show. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's online. Yeah. And the bonus stuff's not... It's not yeah, there. Yeah, or so, the voiceover, director's cuts, yeah, and all that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's heaps of things, but yeah. um, it's weird because I think it's very sort of uh, people are reacting very quickly mm. to the market. So suddenly something's not worth anything. So it's like, oh, we'll clear it out. Yeah. And then the market comes back and it's like, oh, where is it? And we'll try yeah. and accumulate and that, it again. Yeah, or you miss it. Yeah. Don't miss it for 12 years and then, oh, I've missed it for 12 months. I need it back. Yeah. You know, it's just what it is. It's know. sort of like shares again. Absolutely. Know. Buy, sell, freak yeah. out. The market drops, sell everything. Oh, I've lost money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly the same process, yeah. except material. Yep, That's definitely. All. Yeah. Well, man, um, I think i uh, going to enjoy these Pirate Life beers. But, yeah, um, absolutely. Thanks so much, man. It's, welcome, it's, it's been a long time coming to have a chat. It of, has. Uh, and um, we, didn't, we didn't even touch on Thump. Didn't touch on uh, teaching. No. All that sort of mental stuff. <laughs> all that. There's so much stuff to talk about. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch up again. Yeah, for sure. Oh man, the cogs are turning. Uh, if you know me well, you know that uh, I love a little bit of uh, quirky, silly, stupid behavior, especially when I'm sending things out in the post to people. Uh, so li- re-listening to this chat again with Mark has uh, sparked a bunch of ideas. So I'll be scheming away in the background and hopefully. Um, well, at the very least, I'm sure I'll amuse myself, but hopefully I'll amuse a bunch of you people that uh, order from me uh, from the band or Discogs or eBay or whatever it might be. Um, but if you enjoyed this chat with Mark, please reach out to him. You can uh, check him out. Probably the best place to start is Geektopia Oz. Uh, so there's a fake Facebook page uh, there to check out and also a group on Facebook that he's just refreshed. Um, and for anybody that's not um, your stereotypical sort of fan of nerd culture, like, you know, the, the stereotypes of like, you know, yeah, action figures and comics and stuff like that, um, or sci-fi and all those sort of uh, topics, um, the new version of this Facebook group that Mark's relaunched uh, just encourages collections in general. So you could co- collect uh, vinyl, um, CDs, you could collect guitars, you could collect stickers or beer coasters or books or whatever it might be. Who cares? It could be weird and odd and unusual or just amazing. And uh, this group's all about encouraging that. So if you join the group, have a look because there's lots of great photos of the weird and the wonderful and the wacky and all sorts in between. Um, of lots of just random collections of all sorts of stuff. So make sure you check it out if that floats your boat uh, by searching Geektopia Oz on Facebook. Um, the other pages that Mark has is Mark Randall Music and Thump Music. I'll dump everything in the show notes over at andydowling.net or andysocial.net or uh, whatever you're listening to this through. Um, there'll be some clickable links as well. So I'll make sure all the additional social media pages are there. Um, Yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for listening. As always, you can support me by going to uh, andydowling.net and checking out all the other podcasts that I'm involved with, Nod to the Old School, Self Starter, um, our band Lord, of course, lord.net.au. Um, all my social media handles are over on my website as well. And if you want to donate, um, contribute to the podcast financially, paypal.me slash Andy Dowling official covers the costs of all the basics. You know how it works, guys. But uh, until next week, folks, another Crazy Talk episode coming early next week, uh, Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m. and another guest episode every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Until then, folks, take care and ta-ta!